Hey team, Dr. Tamara Hunter here. How are you? It is Friday and I promised you that I would come online here and talk a little bit about some of the reasons why periods stop in women who were previously having periods. Now there are lots and lots and lots of different reasons why and I think it's really important to make sure that you pop along to your GP, ask the question, you know, why is my period stopped? And consider getting a referral to see a gynecologist or reproductive endocrinologist like myself. So let's just quickly, briefly overview some of the reasons why your periods might have stopped. And certainly if you think that it is of concern, then get along and see a practitioner. So why, if you've had periods previously before, what's one of the main reasons? Well, the first one is you could be pregnant. So it's always really, really important to think, mm, do I take my contraceptive right? Or perhaps I was actually trying to conceive. So um, always <laughs> consider that as your number one reason why periods might have stopped. The second reason, but this is more particular for older women, is approaching the menopause. Um, so the average age of menopause is about 51. Uh, anywhere down to 45, that's considered to be normal. Below 45, that's a little bit early. Below 40, that is considered to be premature. Often associated with menopausal symptoms, so things like hot flushes, vaginal dryness, psychological changes, brain fogginess, sleeplessness, those sorts of things. So if you are experiencing any of those symptoms along with your period stopping, then definitely need to get checked out by your GP. Um, Often what will happen with the cycle leading into the, uh, to, the, to the menopause is that it will become shorter. So women often complain of having periods a little closer, a little bit more frequently, and then you'll get large spacing out. So it might go to two to three months and then it just stops and often those menopausal symptoms will kick in. So that's uh, another cause. Now, less than 1% of women will experience a premature menopause that is under the age of 40. But if you think that is you, then I would strongly encourage you to go and see your GP, GP about that. Another common reason, well common, but in my world it's common, um, is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And that can be at any age. We tend not to overdiagnose it in young women under the age of 20, but it can happen. So where you might not have a period for two, three, four months at a time, it is important to get that assessed. And there are some criteria it's not just about having polycystic ovaries on an ultrasound. There are some criteria that you need to satisfy. Um, so again, I get along to your GP practitioner who can then run some blood tests, perhaps arrange to get an ultrasound done and uh, see if that is part of the diagnosis. A lot of people think PCOS is just associated with you know hair growth and bad skin and getting sort of centrally overweight, but that's not all sufferers of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So again, it's really important to go and get those blood tests. Some other things uh, where it might be presumed to be polycystic ovarian syndrome um, is where a woman has thyroid dysfunction. So severe hypo or hyperthyroidism, so Hashimoto's or Graves disease, um, can result in, in cessation of periods as well. So again, ensuring someone has had their thyroid function assessed. High levels of a hormone called prolactin, that's the hormone that helps us produce breast milk. So high levels of prolactin can also shut off periods. That's why when women are lactating after having had a baby, they don't have a return in their cycle because the high levels of prolactin that are being produced to make breast milk are actually suppressing the periods. That's called lactational amenorrhea, if you wanna know the formal term. So again, assessment of prolactin. Now in someone who's not just had a baby, who's not breastfeeding, if they're getting associated leaking from the nipples, definitely need to see your GP about that, or even a really bad headache that can result in double vision. Again, you must be seen by a GP because this could be something central going on that is causing either high levels of prolactin or a putting pressure um, on the optic nerve. And so it's really important to make sure you get seen by a GP and even arrange some head imaging. So again, blood test, blood test. Um, what else could be causing a cessation of periods? Well, sometimes just being overweight, having a significant amount of estrogen coming from the fat cells, which then suppresses the cycle. So sometimes you can get some cycle irregularity. You probably wouldn't necessarily completely suppress the cycles, but again, that can be um, something that can interrupt the cycles. I would encourage you to go and see your GP and rule out the other things first. What else do we look for in reasons for why a woman might have stopped her cycle? 
Um, 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 off the top. Oh, okay. So one of the big areas that I see a lot of is young women with functional hypothalamic amenorrhea or FHA. And that is where their lifestyle choices have resulted in the axis, the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, you might remember that from biology at school, has been suppressed because it's considered a non-essential service. We don't need to be reproducing in times of war and times of famine. And so where young girls or even older women who do a lot of exercise, a lot of exercise where they've reduced their body fat percentage, for example, or a lot of exercise that's meant they've got a high amount of endorphins running through their system, shuts off the non-essential reproductive service. Um, perhaps where they've lost a lot of body fat, so the leptin drive and the kispeptin drive is not there. Um, 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 uh, some medications, some psycho, um, psychological medications um, that are used to, to treat things like schizophrenia can suppress cycles as well. Opioids, so opioid medications and, and um, illicit drugs can also suppress the cycle as well. So there's lots of things that, that can affect the hypothalamus that can then uh, cause suppression of cycles. So definitely head along to your healthcare practitioner to talk about what some of those lifestyle choices, restrictive eating being one of them, um, has done to affect uh, cycles. So just off the top of my head, there's a little bit of an overview of why the cycles might have stopped. There are some things that you can do um, yourself to change that from a lifestyle perspective, but the vast majority of them need some sort of intervention from a doctor. So I think your first port of call, if you haven't already, is to get along to a GP, get them to run some baseline tests um, and refer them off to a specialist to either manage the underlying condition or at least help you to manage the lifestyle things that have caused a cessation of periods. Is it a problem not having periods? Well, yeah, it is a little bit of a problem. Um, it's a problem that if the, if the ovaries themselves have stopped working and they're not producing estrogen anymore, estrogen is a really important hormone, say for bone health. So if you get more than six months without estrogen, that can cause some quite significant impact on bone mineral density. If it is something like polycystic ovarian syndrome and you're not having periods, well, that's also a problem because it can cause an overgrowth of the lining of the womb. We call it hyperplasia, which can harbor cancer. So again, it is really important for you to be having at least two to three periods per year um, from that perspective. So again, really important to sit down with someone who understands the reproductive cycle, who understands the endocrinology of things, um, to figure out is this pathological and do I need to manage this? So hopefully that's been some interesting, helpful information for you. If you do know of somebody who you think needs to hear this information, please don't hesitate to pass the information on. Uh, please don't hesitate to come and see me. We are hopefully getting to the end of um, end of uh, this sort of ISO time, the uh, social distancing time. Um, I'm really hoping that we're going to be opening our doors again soon. We are seeing, seeing lots of patients though with telehealth and it is still um, an effective way for us to, to work and it's lovely being able to chat with my patients and connect with them on a regular basis. Um, so I'm hoping to see you guys soon. Have a beautiful weekend. It's my birthday weekend. So I'm going to have a really nice one and I'll see you next week. We've got some more fun, fun stuff to talk about next week. See you soon.